Welcome to all my friends around the world and in particular our friends in Australia and to another show of hemp engineering. Today we have a great pleasure interviewing Mrs. Karen Birch or Borge, Borge, right? Birch, yes, Birch, Karen Birch. It sounds uh, French, right? Yes, yeah, it is. I'm not, yeah. I'm not sure where I'm, I haven't even, I'm not sure where I'm from that side of the family is from. All right. I think it's, yeah, Europe somewhere, yeah. Yeah, somewhere over there, yeah. But we are, yeah. we are in Australia anyway. We are a mix of a lot yeah. of... <laughs> so, yeah. And I got my, you got my attention, Karen, you're coming on board to rep represent our values and our and our journey that a lot of people are uh, betting uh, for yes. the best of all through the legalized cannabis party. And you yes. have decided to come on board as a candidate. Welcome yes. and congratulations. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. But at, Thank you, Raima. I'm full of questions for you. How did you end up in the cannabis world and how did you end up deciding to become a uh, cannabis uh, candidate. Okay, so firstly, um, I moved into um, a house in Newcastle with a uh, where my housemate, um, firstly BJ Footer, was the vice president of the New South Wales Hemp Party, oh. and his mate Sean Summit was also a a big activist, um, very active in the hemp, New South Wales Hemp Party. And at that time, I was out. Um, Look, fighting coal seam gas because I've seen in the northern rivers we have this um yeah a lot of coal seam gas which is quite damaging to the environment and BJ and Sean started running um hemp meetings New South Wales hemp gathering meetings in Newcastle and I discovered you know I thought well here we are we have this huge problem this massive threat to the environment or we have this plant that we can grow to grow food medicine um housing uh plastic, paper, fabric, fiber, batteries, oil, diesel, biodiesel, all these amazing uses for, with this one plant that um, is not damaging to the environment. It actually repairs the ecosystem and helps restore the ecosystem and repairs the environment. It cleans the air and it's a mop-up crop. It pulls toxins from the body like it does the earth. So, so beneficial to having your diet and um, so many uses, so much passion for the hemp plant started then. And um, at that time, BJ and Sean started experimenting with cannabis oil because, um, yeah, we, he was, they were just guided to. Um, and we started to see results. We started to see a reduction in seizures for children. Yes. We started to see people have pain relief, um, healing, you know, assistance with insomnia. We were seeing people getting better results with, um, Epilepsy, like epilepsy and MS, Parkinson's. We were just witnessing cancer. everything. And, and it, yes. Yeah, cancer, everything. It just automatically grew. We had no idea what we were doing. But, um, you know, people would say to me, why, how are you getting away with doing what you're doing? And I felt, and I, my reply was that we are working in integrity with the plants and the people. Yes. And a lot of people around me were scared when we started because we started the Church of Ubuntu um, almost a decade ago. We've been, you know, in the cannabis, supporting people with whole plant cannabis for almost a decade and advocating and, um, you know, we're just, yeah, people, you know, like I said, asking how we were getting away with it. We were, I was, for me, I just, I just felt that there was, once you learn the truth about this plant, you cannot stop. You cannot stop telling people it's actually, um, inhumane to not tell people it's like it's such a it's um really i don't i can't even put a word to it what i would call the people that know the truth about this plant and are withholding it it's just inhumane you know um another thing when i realized was anyone that's withholding this plant from the people all the government officials all of them um big pharma they're actually doing so to the detriment of themselves and their loved ones you know, um, so yeah, my passion, my passion for the cannabis plant and ending prohibition about plant, this plant, and has grown over the years. And now we're witnessing it everywhere. And big farm, you know, big farmers taken over. Um, 
the government, there's all these restrictions on this plant that has no recorded deaths ever in history. And it's been consumed as food and medicine for thousands of years, believed to be the most nutrient rich food source known to man. Um, or, or Dr. William Courtney would say the most important vegetable on, on the planet. And it's withheld from us. And so I was witnessing everyone having better quality of life, all these people having better quality of life. And then I was also witnessing the restrictions, the people that were missing out. And, you know, it was safe to grow in Canberra and South Australia, but it's not safe to grow everywhere else in Australia. You know, I was speaking to a, a client of ours that's 82 and she was so excited she, um, that she can grow two plants in her backyard, one for her and one for her husband because she lives in Canberra. And it was her great grandson that just witnessed her having so much pain and said, Nan, please try cannabis. Contact Ubuntu. And, and, you know, and then the police, you know, we started helping so many of their family and friends and their animals that they, you know, that they, um, that they didn't want to come and hurt, harm us because they knew that what we were doing is good and right. And, um, and you know, we go, just, we've probably made mistakes over the years, but we've tried our best. And, and the difference with us is that it, um, we look at it as a lifestyle. You know, you, there's, if, we, if, we're, and the, um, if we're sick, then there's something that's caused that disease or that illness or that there's an imbalance in our body that's caused. And more, you know, it's, um, the major, let's look at the major causes of disease, alcohol, cigarettes, yes. um, junk food, refined sugar all available in multiple outlets in every single town where this cannabis plant as food and medicine or recreational therapy, no recorded death ever. Um, one thing I want to stress too, a lot of people say, oh, someone, you know, there's people addicted to it. Um, my first question is, is it hydroponic and, or are they putting tobacco with it? And the answer is always yes. It's not the plant that they're addicted to, although I feel I do crave it because it's my, it, it just keeps my, it's, it, when consuming the cannabis plant, the, uh, um, the purpose of that is to achieve and maintain homeostasis. So the objective of the plant when you consume it is to go in, achieve and maintain homeostasis. So I know I'm at my healthiest when I'm consuming enough hemp seeds every day. I've reduced the toxins I'm putting in on my body and I'm, looking at those things that cause the disease in, in the first place. Um, and so, yeah, the Legalized Cannabis Party is, you know, they're standing up for driving laws, but there's also the workplace um, yes. laws that need to change, you know. And I know that there's so many miners in the background, you can't see it because it's dark, but this is the Hunter Valley behind me right now. And um, there's so many miners up there and... I've spoken to my brother who works in the mine and he and I said, what's the ice situation, Nige? And he said, it's killing people. It's destroying men and their families where they would rather come home and have a cone from a plant that they're grown in their backyard yes. that they've nurtured. And I, I know men, a very uh, well-known businessman, he's come up to me and said, Kaz, I'm a better father. I'm a better dad. I'm a better friend. All the, I know that there's so many men out there that would love, that would don't want to go to the pub with their mates. They want to be home with their family. So if they, you know, they would rather their choice of recreational therapy would be homegrown cannabis, but because of the driving laws and the workplace laws, this is not an option for them. So yeah. it's, they, they're going for ice and it's destroying families. This ice epidemic is a is another huge problem and a, and one of the Probably one of the um, one of the main reasons I'm, I'm, you know, standing and trying to get this bullshit laws changed. It's been, you know, used for thousands of years, and and I feel prohibition is the gateway to needless suffering for all Australians. That's I feel, my opinion. I feel your yeah. emotion and I feel your passion, Karen, and yes, and within if you were elected beyond the driving laws and the workplace absurdity of the level of what they do with their power to keep blocking the this kind of movement, which is sounds so, I can't really explain how 
what I feel for this. Uh, Miss, I, Miss I can Chukawa. understand. Yes, yeah, yeah. I totally because, get it. Because they're not yeah. ignorant. The elite is not ignorant. They know better. They know that this is wrong. They know that this is full. Yeah. And they know yeah. that sooner or later, it doesn't matter what they do. They're already yeah. surrendered. They should, they should declare themselves, I'm sorry. I, I, I want to help. I was mistaken. I follow 80 years of Nazism yeah. from a country that imposed a global dictatorship on the rest of the world. And now they're changing the laws because they realize that they screwed up. And then the rest yeah. of the world now says, no, we don't want to go to the, we don't want to end up the provision. We're happy with the provision. <laughs> Yeah. So it doesn't really make sense, you know? Yes. Yeah. 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 No, there's lots of um lots of things that need to change. I believe, you know, we definitely deserve immediate affordable access. The people that um those are the you know, the low income disadvantaged, which is getting more and more now, um, with all the rising land you know, rates and things like that, it's making it, you know, the poverty level is um you know, becoming more prominent in our community. And our environment and families it's just you know there's so much so much that needs to be done but i think um would be very much a positive movement forward to um you know end this prohibition and and make yes. it more affordable for the, yes. everyone it's, yeah, it's not the big farmers plant it's not the government's plant this plant up this plant was gifted to us yes. we're the people right for create from creation the same creator that created us created this and the plant and um and we were, I'm sure that we were not here to put on this earth to suffer and watch our fellow men and women suffer. I'm sure that, um, you know, I'm sitting here in a beautiful harbour surrounded by beaches. I've got the mountains behind me. I'm sure that we're put here to not only survive but thrive. And, um, and yeah, I'll just go on now a little bit about hemp, Rahman, um, before we wrap it up. But, you know, we, uh, my vision when I started here almost a decade ago now is, well, um, this is the biggest coal port in the world. So if this is the biggest oh. coal port in the world and we're trying to make the um, transition to renewables, um, we have this self-sustainable plant um, that can be grown in abundance in the Hunter Valley. We're oh. already working on um, setting up the, um, the infrastructure for hemp building. So I've got some building bricks and some timber that's um, in a couple of processing factories um, in the in the pipeline of getting created here. Um, so yeah, if anyone wants to reach out and talk about the hemp and growing hemp and how you can help and how you can be a part of that, especially in New South Wales. Um, yeah, I think we've got a lady in Sydney working on the hemp fabric machine. Apparently we sold all of our machinery to China yeah, please, uh, a long time ago. Yeah, yeah because I thought that we could just use the existing infrastructure, but we haven't got much left anymore. So yes, right, um, anyway. Right. Um, but yeah, you know, not everyone, you know, I say, I've been raving on about this, banging on for years about this and people still, I'll still share a post and they go, what? You can, you can, you know, you know, you can make a house with hemp or, um, you know, or you can make plastic with hemp. There's heaps in Nimbin making um, plastic didgeridoos and all sorts of stuff up yes. there at Martin and Nimbin. Um, the, the, you know, the potential to be paper. And, you know, I've been sharing lots of, you know, how they used to do it. There's people would say, oh, we haven't got the infrastructure. And I said, but they did it, you know, before electricity. You know, yes. they did it like yes. thousands of years. Yes. There was canvas. So, you know, Australia wouldn't have been discovered when it was if it wasn't yes. for the hemp plant because of the um, rigging and the rope and the canvas, which was named after cannabis. Um, and the food, they ate hemp food to come here. And, um, yeah, so, yeah, lots. Lots, um, yeah, his, lots that I'm passionate the, about. In case you didn't get that message, <laughs> the history and, of um, time is linked to cannabis. Whether we sorry, the 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 history of humankind is linked to cannabis, to hemp, to marijuana. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. Without it, uh, yeah. without it, the progress of humanity would have never existed. Without without hemp. The Spaniards and the British would have never arrived to America because it was the food, it was the sails, it was the rope, it was it, it was the, the, their their clothes. And yeah, 
yeah. because of their seed um, the food of made out of you know, hemp they were able to survive during the three month journey to America so yes it was yeah. a different time Karen it's a this special is plant a, it's a special plant yeah this is a great pleasure talking to you could you if you were elected what would be your 30 second pitch speech in the moment that you receive this um well, to be honest, I really don't want to be a politician. So, and there's a lot of people in our in our group that would go before me. So we're part of a big team. Um, but I would say that uh, cannabis is food first and foremost. And it is time, I believe, to set up the infrastructure to grow hemp for food, for housing, for plastic, for paper, for fibre, for our own well-being, our children's well-being, yes. all future generations and to protect and preserve our precious Mother Earth and our natural um, resources like water and land. So that would be my, what I'd like to see um, come out of this. And affordable access to the world's most special um, non-toxic medicine. It's totally non-toxic to the organs of the cannabis when consumed as medicine. So, and uh, I think, you know, um, the purer the form, whole plant, um, the better, you know, it will always be superior, superior to synthetic or isolated compound um, cannabis, in my opinion. When I listen to you, uh, my heart starts pumping like a kid. <laughs> and I Thanks. resonate with your words because they are my same words, my same passion, and I feel that you're going to make a difference, Karen. Congratulations. Well, thank you. We're trying. Trying um, is better than doing nothing, they say. Absolutely. Just having a go is better than doing nothing. I had Dr. Andrew Catalara, so I also need to um, thank him. He's uh, been an advocate for 30 years. He, he first discovered hemp when he was trying to find a solution, solution to the deforestation. And he is, I've been instrumental. I've walked this path with him, and I, w I don't think I'd be where I am or is dedicated without him. So I'm so glad I remembered him because um yeah he's he's um yeah he's he's crazy but he's awesome and he has made a huge difference in raising awareness about the cannabis hemp plant. He's proven in a court of law that cannabis is a medical necessity for children with intractable epilepsy. That was about four years ago and still these children are living without this plant. So there's still a lot of stuff that has to be sorted. Well, yeah. Karen, if you're not crazy, then what is the purpose of life? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've got to be crazy, eh? Yeah, exactly. A bit, I Love a bit yeah. for you. Thanks. Wish you the best. And my all energies of prosperity, abundance, love, and success for these upcoming weeks until you reach the victory and become another voice in the parliament for millions of people that really need people like you, Karen. Thank you very much. We definitely will. Thank, Thank you, Ramon. Thank you. We definitely oh, will. Yeah. Make a difference. Bye.